call here say busybody intervention, make do some mess, playing politics. You now said, Oh, ICPC, Code of Conduct Bureau, EFCC, I'm giving you 72, 72 hours. Okay, you take a look at major issues that had been bothering the polity right from um the beginning of um the campaign period and then amidst the election period and post election we have lots of um occurrences that took the um the, the hem of affairs um during these times okay one of which was the case that was filed against um the presidential candidate atiku abubakar by face to skeyamo okay as a result of an expose from the formal media aid of atiku abubakar michael achimugu my name is angelo welcome to nation voice tower with the updates, first of all, a veteran journalist, Ruben Abati, has criticized um, the former Minister of State for Labor and Productivity, Festus Keyamo, senior advocate of Nigeria, over um, the way he handled the court case he filed against the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party in the 2023 presidential elections, Atiku Abubakar, in which he was actually accused of um, using... Um, um, SPVs as a medium of laundering public funds during his time as VP. Okay, now um, SPVs can be known to be special purpose vehicles. Now, Kiyamo gave an ultimatum of 72 hours um, to security operatives and agencies to please initiate the arrest of Atiku Abubakar. Now, in the note of that, or in the wake of that, Abati noted that according to the Enabling Establishment Act, Security agencies have the right to engage and um, to actually investigate in whatever and whoever they choose to and nobody has the right to put a time frame on the duration of investigation to give more light or to be more light on this particular issue. I have a brief interview from Arise News um, where Ruben Abati spoke and lambasted um, the former minister and the senior advocate of Nigeria. He has been trending online for the wrong reasons. Let me let you watch this clip from one of their programs on Arise News where he lambasted the former minister. It's called here say, busybody intervention, make do some mess, playing politics. You now said, oh, ICPC, Code of Conduct Bureau, EFCC, I'm giving you 72, 72 hours. Ultimate. So the question is raised, who are you? To so give the investigating uh, agencies a 72-hour ultimatum. By their enabling establishment acts, mm -hmm. and I'm sure Kiyama himself knows that, you know, these uh, agencies, they, they act on the basis of their own discretion. They, in, they do their investigations as they choose. And they just raise the point, what gives you the uh, confidence that what you are even asking about uh, corruption, money laundering issues can be investigated within 72 hours. Okay, as a citizen, you have the right, you know, citizen action to raise petition, to report people, to try to ensure uh, uh, good order in the society. But you now went beyond that without even getting the response, you, you filed a suit in court. So it was in that context uh, that the judge said, look, this is frivolous and vexatious mm -hmm. and it cannot stand, you know, under the rules. And the judge, I think, was even very lenient. You find him uh, 10 million and then added the caveat that this 10 million should be paid 10 percent yes. per annum to the party circles. And what is the 10 percent of uh, 5 million, 10 percent of uh, uh, 5 million until the money is liquidated? If the judge wanted to be strict, he, he, he could easily have uh, accepted the, uh, uh, the, the respondent's uh, uh, you know, request for 30 million fine and he could have said, you pay it now. But isn't this quite unfortunate? But the point of law it. is not about the quantum of punishment. Yeah. It's about the gravamen of the ruling of the court. Right, welcome back. This is still Nation Voice Tower, your most preferred YouTube channel. Yes, recall that a few um, moments ago, a few days ago, um, Festus Kayamo has been trending online for the wrong reasons, okay? And Abuja High Court actually dismissed the suit he filed against um, the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Atiku Abubakar, over um, his alleged um, use of special purpose vehicles to launder public funds during his time as VP. 
So, um, well, Ruben Abati has just done the right thing because I believe that um, uh, the suit filed by Festus Kayama there was frivolous, according to um, the chief judge that presided over the suit. And he has in turn been filed or been slapped with a whooping uh, fine of 10 million naira to be paid in installments per annum. That was so lenient of the judge there. That is that from that particular update. Next, I have an interview. Former Governor of River State, um, Governor Nyesom Ezenwanwike, has stated that he hasn't actually adjusted fully to the post-governorship life, okay, as he finds himself awake around 3 a.m. every day thinking about national welfare even after leaving office on 29th day of May 2023. Now, in the wake of his incessant visits to the um, Aso Villa recently, when asked, Wiki asserted and posited that his frequent visits to the Aso Villa has nothing to do with any sort of political appointment or calling of favor on the cards from the president Asiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Recall that in the last few days, Wiki, in, uh, alongside other, other chieftains from the PDP and um, Sheyi Makinde too, the governor of your state, have been said to have visited the villa countless times or no fewer than three times okay now he had this reply to say to newsmen as um the main reason behind his frequent visits to the aso villa recently watch near some wiki of course he always has a way to dodge questionnaires and questions that are directed to him or that are directed to indict him watch here some wiki speak to newsmen no, yeah, welcome back. Before we go further, I would urge all our viewers, both incoming and already existing, to please tap the subscribe button as well as tapping um, the notification bell so you could get updates from us anytime to drop in. And don't forget to stay glued to Nation's Voice Tower because this particular channel keeps you updated on the polity issues pertaining to the democratic system in Nigeria and the way the judiciary has been blowing as regards the ongoing presidential elections petitions tribunal at the Court of Appeal and even more. Now, my own take on the interview that was granted by Wiki there is, Wiki is a wise man, we've seen him over time. I will call him the drama king of Nigerian politics alongside his friend and brother, um, Dino Melaya of Kogi State, now enemies though. So I would like to say that um, Wiki has been playing a very, very strong card here. I would say that he has lost his space in River State as um, a governing body or uh, someone whose voice is supposed to be heard. So Wiki is pitching his tent with the APC to see what could be done. Well, according to that video, Wiki said he was called to the Aso Villa in regards to um, the Senate presidency. And the, uh, his own take is that he wants the Senate presidency to be zoned to the South-South. Please, I would love to ask our viewers and all Nigerians, what has Wiki got to offer as regards the decision-making to the presidency of the Senate? Who is Wiki in the APC or in the government system to have a say in who or what or which region is to ascend the throne of the presidency of the Senate. That is to say that Wiki is playing a sort of um, hardball or Wiki has something to hide according or in accordance to his incessant visit to the Aso Villa. I will say again and I will reiterate that Wiki will be given an appointment in this government and um, that will be confirmed after um, the announcement of the cabinet members of Asiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu and the Kashim Shetima. If Wiki is not returned as a minister, Wiki will be given a particular parastatal to govern or something so crucial for him to hold on to as regards his, the role he played in the just concluded general elections. The truth is, Wiki wouldn't say a word until it is confirmed. We uh, recall that today, earlier, the Senate and the House of Reps approved a whooping number of 20 special advisors for the incoming president, Asiwa Jubola Ahmed Tinubu. We're here to see the name of Wiki as regards appointments. We will see that as time goes on. Finally, on our update, I have something different. Now, um, recall that some few um, weeks ago, a, 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 some residents in Abuja, the Federal Capital Territory, filed a lawsuit against Asiwa Jubola Ahmed Tinubu, the president-elect, now the president of Nigeria, over him not being able to garner 25% of legitimate votes in the just concluded elections. Now, a suit filed by those residents of the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja, seeking to stop the inauguration of Asiwaju then as Nigeria's president has been dismissed by an Abuja Federal High Court. If efforts have been made to interpret um, the section 133, subsection 1B of the Nigerian 1999 Constitution that states that political candidates or any presidential candidate 
uh, that is vying for the presidency can only be declared president if he has not less than um, one quarter of the votes cast at the election in each of at least two thirds of all the states in the federation and uh, federal capital territory Abuja. Now that means that the president elect has not gained 25% of legitimate votes in the FCT as stated in the constitution in that section. Okay, now deciding on the matter brought before this honorable court or before the honorable court today, the presiding judge, Justice Inyang Epuo, during his sitting, actually dismissed the case and went further to slip or to slap a form of um, fine, very outrageous, whooping some of 10 million each um, to each lawyer representing uh, the Abuja residents to be paid immediately to the Chief Justice of the Federation. Chief Justice um, Kayode Ariwola and the Attorney General of the Federation. That is very sad because I felt that these particular citizens and inhabitants of Abuja were fighting for the welfare of Nigerians, okay? I see no reason why this particular judge should actually fault this um, suit filed by the residents in Abuja because they had the right and the legitimacy to file that suit. But I will say that the Abuja people have no local standee to actually um, to, to, to challenge um, the 25% of votes because um, they are just um, the citizens of the country. They have no legal backing and they have no electoral backing to charge or to actually challenge that victory of Asiwaju over the 25% issue subject to sec section 133 subsection 1 of the 1999 constitution that is that on our particular update i hope you enjoyed our time together and i'll bring you more updates as time goes on thanks and see you next time bye